Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we will be learning the theory of tetradimensions. And in a separate video, we will be talking about how to solve the problems related to tetradimensions. Okay. Uh, so in this case, just we will be talking about the basics. So before understanding the tetrad analysis, what we are doing using tetradimensions, uh, usually what we know that for diploid uh, cells or diploid systems, uh, that means the two n system. There is a way of determining the linkage, a way of determining the linkage distance between two genes using a, a crossing over a two point or three point cross uh, match. Okay. But in case of uh, the haploid organisms, in case of uh, those organisms which are having haploid cells, uh, as like like yeast, alpha cells, and A cells, which are haploid, and so many other different types of haploid system. Now, if you want to find out uh, the gene and the linkage between those genes uh, that are present in the haploid system, we require the tetrad analytic uh, system to find that out. Okay. So, what is tetrad? Tetrad is a form of chromosome that we can do. It's a form of chromosome that is being formed during the cell division and the formation of gametes. Okay, during the cell division, especially during meiosis, during the formation of gametes, right? So, if you look at here, uh, in this case of meiosis 1, what happens in meiosis 1? In meiosis 1, the number of chromosomes is kind of reduced to half. So let me talk about it. Meiosis are having two different sections, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So in meiosis 1, what we are having, here we are having four, so we are having four chromosomes, and this is the number two n uh, chromosomes. In meiosis 1, after the meiosis 1, what we get the cells will get only three chromosomes each. It becomes kind of n, right? So from four, we get two, two, right? Now those two are then further divided, and what we get is so in each chromosome, what we know, so usually when the chromosome present in this condition during this meiosis division, it becomes like this. The chromosomes is kind of duplicated. Now this thing. So four different arms now we are seeing. This is this form is called a tetrad form of the chromosome. Okay, so what we can see here. Now after this meiosis division, those uh, different forms of the chromosome which are linked with each other, those two different arms of chromosomes which are linked with each other via this centromere is then being cleaved from the centromeric region. So it will be cleaved from here, here, and from here, and from here. And then what we've got. We get the separation of these chromosomes individually, and what we end up with, we end up with four different cells. Right? So four. So if we if we consider this thing as two, and we get four. Here. So each of them will contain one arm of the chromosome. After the division, we get something like that. So it comes back to this point, right? But these are this can be gametes, this can be other cell types in case of other other organisms, right? So tetrad means this situation where, uh, where a chromosome is having four different arms like that, okay, four, four different regions. Okay. They are attached by centromere. Okay. And so in this picture, what we can see in this case, in, in the parental type, so what we can see in the parents, one is listed in four, another one is listed in one, <coughs> is crossed with another parent, who is listed in four, capital, listed in one, small. So that means this capital means a uh, uh, dominant and small means recessive obviously. So histidine recessive tryptophan dominant with histidine dominant tryptophan recessive. And what after the cross we get the diploid cell. This is the zygote. Remember, this is the 2N, which is zygote. And if you look at here, from this after the meiosis, what it can produce the gametes, right? So from the from the gamete, what we know. In this case, uh, so in this case, uh, it can divide in this way. So simple division from this line, it can generate two different sections. Then the line will be there from the centromere to finally separate those out into single fold, right? So that's how it's actually conducted. So at the end, what we get, we get here. So we get this part altogether, this part altogether, right? And similarly, this part. In this part, right? So if you look at this part, histidine negative, histidine small, tryptophan plus. So it's a kind of parental. Histidine small, tryptophan plus. Again, parental type, right? So because it is following this parent one, so parent one and this is parent two, it is following parent one. And bottom histidine, uh, histidine dominant tryptophan 
and this is if it's still in dominant because then this is if it is following the parent key. So these are also parent key. So you can see four of them here, four of the combinations that uh, usually give rise in this case, is all of them are <coughs> of parental type. So you call them parental diatype because all of them are having two units. So parental diatype or PD. Okay. In this case, again, first division is from this line. Second division is from this line. Right. So after that, look at it very carefully. During the arrangement of chromosome in the meiosis 1, in the metaphase plate, the arrangement is a kind of different. Okay. So what is different in this case? As you can see, that in this case, blue one is the bottom, green one is in the top. But in this case, blue one, blue one is in the top, green one is in the bottom. So due to this shift of this particular set of chromosome, after the division, the outcome is going to be different. How? Let's say here, histidine, tryptophan, both of them recessive. So this is not following any of the parents. Because to be any of the parental type, one should be dominant, one should be recessive. But in this case, both of them recessive. And in that case, both of them dominant. So all of them are not having any similarity with the parental type. So we can add them as non-parental. All of them are non-parental. This type are called as non-parental diatype or simply NPD. Okay. Now let's move on to the third type. Now in this case, as you can see, the arrangement is similar like the parental type, but there is a crossing over that is going on between the first two set of the chromosomes. So as the crossing over is going on, <coughs> As a result of this crossing over, there is a shift and transfer of gene from one chromosome to another chromosome. As a result of that, then after that there will be again division from the centromere and we get this. So after that what it produces, histidine recessive tryptophan uh, dominant, this is a parental type. Histidine and tryptophan both are dominant, this is non-parental type. Histidine and tryptophan both are recessive, which is again non parental type. Histidine dominant, tryptophan recessive, which is again parental type. Right? Because we are having one dominant, one recessive in parental, so we get two parental and two non parental. So we get a 50 50 situation for parental is to non parental type. Right? This kind of situation is telling us we are talking about tetras. So what we mean by tetras here? This in, in tetrad, uh, this is the situation which is called the tetrad. Tetrad means definitely there is, so tetrad means definitely there is, there is a cross over. So definitely there is a cross over. Tetrad means, why? Because tetrad means when the chromosome, two chromosomes, remember I have drawn the structure previously, these chromosomes are involved with each other in crossing over some. Just say this, this is the structure. This is the section for the crossing over, right? Due to this crossing over event that is going on between these two sections, it forms what you call that tetrad. And the crossing over section and the point where the crossing over actually occurs is called chiasm. Okay. <coughs> now once you understand that concept, it's now the time how to calculate the this tetratype and the frequency of this crossing over, right? Because if you can calculate the frequency of crossing over, what we know that if we calculate the frequency of crossing over, we can easily understand and we can easily get uh, uh, the distance between two genes that we want to form, right? So that is very, very important. Now in this case, how to calculate that? So here it is the formula for calculation. The formula for calculation of recombination frequency between two genes in tetratypes and in haploid formation is this. Recombination frequency or RF equals to NPD plus half tetratype divided by total number of tetrads into 100. To get the frequency 100%, right? So what we need to form, what we need to follow here is that if this is a gene and if two points are there, if, if this is the uh, DNA, two genes are there, gene 1 and gene 2, 
and we need to find the distance between these two genes. So how can we find it? The, the way of finding it using this tetrad analysis, the formula NPD plus half T divided by total tetrads into 100. Okay. Now if I look at here, <coughs> if we get a single crossover event, for example, let's say single crossover events is going on. Due to the single crossover events, normally if there is no cro crossover, let me talk, if there is no crossover, no crossover whatsoever, single or double, no crossover whatsoever. So in those cases where it is no crossing over between the genes, between the chromosomes, what we get, we get simply all of them will be parental dytypes. All of them are PD. Now if there is a single crossover, it shifts this PD to a tetratype. So if there is a single crossover, it results in tetratype. If there is a double crossover, so single crossover produces tetratype, then the double crossover will restore the tetratype into again a parental dytype. So if we are having double crossover, it will result in a parental dytype. Right? Now, usually in case of double crossover, we talk about two strand double crossover. Now, if three strands are involved in the double crossover, as, as it is shown in this picture, it will provide again, again, double crossover between three will generate a tetratype. And again, if there is a double crossover in any, any count, kind, three strand double crossover, it will give rise to tetratype. Now, if there is a double crossover between four strands, then in those cases, there is no way of generating parental dytype, no way of generating tetratype, there will be non-parental dytype. So to produce non-parental dytype, it requires double crossover in four strand. And when you talk about double crossover in four strand, that means double crossover in all the arms of the chromosome. And that is extremely rare. That is very, very rare. Right? So in any kind of experimental procedures that we are going to see and solve the questions, we are going to find that in all the different types, NPD or non-parental dye type are going to be the least number of offsprings or least number of outcomes because this event is very, very rare. And you are going to get more and more parental type because there are less crossover, so you get high parental dye type. Now if there is crossover, either single crossover, it generates tetratype, double crossover between three strand tetratype. But if it is double crossover between two strands, it will generate parental dytype. That's the only unique situation because one crossover changes the DNA sequence, another crossover restores the sequence, right? So that's why there's no net change of double crossover between two strands. Okay. <clears throat> now once we understand the concept of the tetrads and once the concept of crossovers and all the different types of tetrads, we need to know another more concept that is called the meiosis divisions or segregation during meiosis. The segregation means segregation of chromosomes, right? So in meiosis, there are segregation called first division segregation and then second division segregation, right? The first division segregations mean the simple segregation of set of chromosomes from each other. So that is, if we put a line from between them, we get a first division segregation like that. Okay, now after that the segregation occurs from the centrum and what we get final products, right? Now in first division segregation what happens if it occurs via the process called first division segregation that means it is not involved in any kind of crossing over. So first division segregation, no crossover in this case. So you can see here no crossover events is actually done simple pro products are generated. Now in case of this non-crossover or first division segregation patterns, we are going to find in the offsprings, what we are going to find, if we draw a line between those uh, different uh, offsprings or eight, in, in all this process they are going to provide you eight different outcomes. In all these eight different outcomes you need to put an imaginary line and you need to form four uh, on the top and four on the bottom or four in the left hand, four on the right hand, whatever. Now you can see either all of them are this as you can see in this picture uh, the phenotype is white or all of them are green. It doesn't mean it, it not it always occurs like that. Either it will be all of them. So whatever we are seeing in one side, all of them are will uh, of different uh, all of same type. Not sorry, all of them are of same type. So either all of them are white or all of them are green. 
sometimes either all of them are uh, tall all of them are short but there never will be a mix in case of first division and seg segregation but if it occurs in second division segregation in case of second division segregation patterns how you are going to find it requires it involves a crossing over either single or double whatever usually single crossovers in this case not double when crossover even occurs what it does it changes this pattern of first division segregation now in that case if we consider an imaginary line from middle how your it is going to look like in one side you are going to find the mix of different variety but in this case you are going to find the same type of variety not the mix in this case you are going to find the mix so that is the difference right and this type of features of finding out the first division segregation as well as the second division segregation is important to find out the distance between the gene you are going to find with the centromere right that is very very important because because uh, the problems that they are going to provide us and we are going to solve uh, are kind of two one is the distance between two genes that are linked whether they are linked or not if they are linked the distance between the two genes and then they uh, they will also ask the distance between one gene with respect to the centromere right so you need to find the distance between the centromere and the gene also and to find out the distance between a gene and its centromere you need to rely on the first and second division segregation patterns right so once you find the first and second division segregations the formula to calculate the distance between uh, the gene and uh, the first uh, division segregation uh, the gene and uh, the the uh, centromere is the formula like that so the recombination frequency will be like half into number of tetrads shown the second division segregation of this gene divided by the total tetrads into 100 right so half into total number of tetrads showing second division segregation so you need to find out which is showing the second division segregation and then divided by total tetrads total number of tetrads into 100 that's how you are going to find it. okay so this is a problem we are going to solve later and we'll be seeing how to solve this problem as you can see you need to formulate the distance between two genes as well as the individual distance between gene and its centromere right so both are important both are required so that's kind of it and i hope that's helpful thank you